Well, good morning. It's good to see you. Glad to have you that have joined us online today. And uh, listen, today the, uh, the wind hasn't really cooperated very much, has it? So uh, we're, uh, we're most probably going to move the after party into the house uh, just to kind of keep everybody from being blown away afterwards. Uh, but as you exit the building this morning, everyone here is going to get a ticket for a free burger. And uh, they have just a, a couple of... A couple of different ways that they do burgers, and uh, so that they can expedite, uh, make the uh, uh, the line move expeditiously. So, um, so we're going to try to get everybody through the line as quick as possible, and and we're going to set up tables and chairs in here. We had many set up out in the driveway this morning, and everything was just getting blown away. So we're just gonna uh, we're gonna make uh, lemonade out of lemons. How about that? And uh, we're we're still gonna have a good time of fellowship and eating together. But make sure that you get a ticket as you leave the building this morning. That is what entitles you to a burger as you go up to the food truck after service this morning. Listen, I uh, uh, this weekend's men's conference was off the chain. It was the best men's conference we have ever had, the most we have ever had. We had guys saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. It was incredible. And uh, so I, I just want to thank all of our team that helped pull this thing off. And if uh, uh, if you see some people walking around here with uh, uh, droopy eyes, that's because I worked them to death this weekend, right? And uh, But I want to thank our team for everything Every, uh, everything that you did to help your pastor pull this thing off. It was, it was amazing. So uh, listen, this coming Wednesday night is going to be a special Wednesday night. We have our, uh, our fine arts uh, students that have, uh, they have uh, uh, competed in the district level and many of them are moving on to the national level and they put so much work into this and it is a highlight. Every year we bring everybody together on a Wednesday night and our students come and share with you the gift that God has given them, whether it's vocal or spoken word or illustrated sermon or Whatever it is, we come together and support our young people, amen? And uh, so it is a great time. And let me tell you this, on Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night, there were so many students, that building on the, over there only holds so many. And this past Wednesday night, they had the largest crowd of students that they've ever had in the history of Mustang Creek. They had 70 students and 20 volunteers, 90 people crammed into that building over there. They had salvations, they had a move of God over there. And man, I'm excited about what God is doing in all of our students and uh, doing right here at Mustang Creek. So thank you for being here with us today. If this is your first time, you are in the right place. Amen. And uh, if you would, hey, take one of the connect cards that's there in the seat in front of you. Fill that out, or you can shoot the QR code on the screen and show your device as you exit the building this morning. We have a great gift for you as you leave the house this morning, and we are just so glad. We've been praying for you. We've been expecting you, and we're glad you're here. If you're online for the first time, send us... How many is ready for the word? Come on, you're almost ready. Oh, we read the, the word of God. Listen, you know that next week is Easter. Next week is Easter, and we've been praying for souls. We've got cards all over the wall with names of people that we've been agreeing in prayer with you for as we have. And that's a weird statement, isn't it? This is my body. 
Then in verse 27, he says, and he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink in the new, drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And then finally, in Isaiah 53, that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Wow, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, even though we don't fully grasp in our human minds all that has taken place and all that you have done for us, help us. Help our small understanding, our limited understanding. God, we can't grasp new kingdom things and, and eternal things without your assistance today. Holy Spirit, help us as we receive living manna today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated today in the house Man, uh, truly, guys, this is the greatest story that has ever been told, the, the greatest act of mercy that's ever been shown. And as Pastor Judy was, um, uh, was sharing this morning in worship time, and we, we just picture this being Palm Sunday, I, I want to just kind of draw, uh, draw you a picture of the things that are taking place we see that um, Jesus uh, and the disciples are having this conversation and it's, it's the Passover feast. It's, it's, they're getting ready for the Passover feast and, and uh, Jesus tells them to go into the city and in a, another one of the gospels, he's, he's telling them, go get me a colt, a donkey where none, none has ever sat before and, and bring that to me and, and go make preparation at such and such house. Uh, you'll find a man, he's carrying a, uh, you know, he's carrying a vase and, and tell him I'm ready to come and celebrate Passover with my disciples. And so they go and they make preparation and Jesus gets on this donkey and he's coming into the city and the whole city is turning out and they're worshiping. They've been hearing of Messiah come. They've been hearing of all of the miracles that have been taking place. They're, you know, I, I mean, the, uh, uh, the, the gossip tree, the gossip vine, whatever you want to call it has been going in Jerusalem and all of the region around everybody's talking about this Jesus of Nazareth and everything that he's been doing and that's been happening and people getting healed and raised from the dead just miracles blind eyes restored and and withered limbs and and all of these things and man they are just and listen we we talk about Palm Sunday guys they're taking off their their cloaks and throwing them. There wasn't a red carpet back then. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There was no red carpet. So they're taking off their, their, their cloaks and they're throwing them on the ground uh, as Jesus is in his uh, entry into the kingdom and they're, they're shouting, blessed is he, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord as he comes into the city. And man, don't you know that those disciples were like, yeah. We were him, right? I mean, don't you know that they were strutting their stuff and they were excited. Man, we have finally arrived. Uh, we are with Jesus. Um, we, you know, uh, man, this is it. This is cool. But then they go into the chambers and something switches gears. Jesus begins to explain what everything has been leading up to 
They're celebrating, they're excited, they're thinking, man, Jesus about to be on the throne, y'all. Come on, right? A king is coming. Like, this is the king. This is, you know, blessed is he. God's, this is the one God sent. This is, this is the deliverer. This is the son of David. He's going to sit on the throne that his father sat on, right? It's father David of generations. And, and so they're so excited that Jesus' time has come, but Jesus' time had come in a different way than what they had expected. Jesus is actually in communion. What we call, now, now, some of you have been saved for a long time. Some of you are brand new to the faith. Some of you in the house, you may have never been, uh, never heard any of these stories before in your life. Listen, Jesus in communion is literally describing the process of what's about to happen in his death for the sins of the entire world. He's describing to them what we call in our society today the Last Supper, right? He, uh, you know, everybody's seen the pictures of Jesus and his disciples, and, and uh, we call it the Last Supper. And so Jesus is describing to them what he's about to do for them, but what's about to happen to him. And in the, the two elements that we receive in communion, the bread and the juice, what uh, Jesus is actually doing at this time when he's sitting at the table with his disciples uh, is that he is talking in terms that every good Jewish young man would understand. He is using language that they would all understand. Well, they were used to hearing the story of manna coming down from heaven. They were used to hearing and practicing the feast of Passover and the sacrifice of lambs. And Jesus literally says, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am that lamb of God, right? Jesus is talking in terms that they understand. So let's just, let's just look at that, this real quick this morning. The, the first thing, Jesus, uh, they're, they, they've come in, they've had this triumphal entry. Uh, they're all excited, man. They're probably high-fiving and, and hoorahing and, and excited. Uh, and they sit down. And, and listen, I, I, I want y'all to, uh, I, I want, uh, something that just really, really hit me this morning. I, it's not even part of my sermon, but it just hit me so much this morning. How many know when we do something great, uh, we kind of go, yeah. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. And this, uh, uh, this past week, I, I, I had an idea and I thought, man, I, I, I'm going uh, to bless my wife. And I, I sent a text to uh, one of the ladies in the church that owns a, a little boutique. And I said, hey, I want to I wanna surprise my wife uh, with a new wardrobe. I want to bless her. Uh, and uh, so she was like, yeah, I can give her a, a little private setting and set her up and fix her up. And, and man, I was just so excited to do that for my wife. Good job, Pastor. Yeah, I know, right? Jesus is about to do the most amazing thing that's ever been done in human history. Jesus, though he didn't deserve it, though he never sinned even once, what greater love is this than one laid down his life for another? And Jesus is about to go to the cross for us and instead of Jesus going, yeah, I'm the man. Jesus still had flesh, y'all know that? He was all man, but he was all God. 
He came in the flesh and he had to wrestle with the flesh just like we have to wrestle with the flesh, yet he was without sin. And Jesus uh, could have strutted in like the man, uh, but instead of letting his flesh rise up, uh, he took off his cloak uh, and he wrapped himself in a towel uh, and he bent down uh, and he washed the dirty feet uh, of the disciples. Oh, man. And Jesus steps up as they're eating and he says, hey guys, I am the bread of life. What? What you talking about, Jesus, right? They had prepared unleavened, that, that, that means something, unleavened, bread as a young man literally I'm embarrassed of this but as a young man even as I started out in the ministry I didn't fully understand I thought you know hey saltine crackers it, it's just got a little salt on it what's the big deal right you know no big deal no we're we're supposed to receive communion of unleavened bread in the Jewish house they understood this as he's talking to them of bread um, they understood that their their practice was uh, when they were preparing for Passover that they would go through all of the house and it became a game for the adults and the children it was a, a visual exercise uh, that they would go through the house and they would begin to clean out all of the leaven in their house uh, that they would put in the breads the spice that would they would add to the food uh, they would clean it out they would have to get it completely out of their house and they would take it outside of the city uh, as a practice to uh, uh, explain to the children uh, how important it was um, to, to get sin out. Uh, and so they would cook unleavened bread. Uh, watch, um, the leaven represented sin. Uh, so they would cook bread uh, as a representative without leaven, uh, a representative of Jesus uh, who had never sinned. Man, no, but they, they didn't even really understand what they were doing, but they were practicing for the day that Jesus would come. And here Jesus stands up as they're eating together and celebrating Passover together and they just gotten through with the triumphal entry and Jesus washes their feet and then Jesus stands up uh, and picks up the bread on the table uh, and says I am the bread of life now listen over in John chapter 6 over in John chapter six, we find Jesus and Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with a few fish and a few loaves of bread. And the scripture says that after he feeds all of these, he sends the disciples onto the other side. He puts them on boats and sends them to the other side uh, on carnival cruise, okay? And, but Jesus goes aside and prays for a while by himself. And then we understand that when he gets ready, uh, he walks on water. And then the next day comes and we find Jesus and his disciples on the other side and all the people that had been fed, uh, uh, they wake up and they're looking around going, where's Jesus? We didn't see him get on the boat. He's not here. Where, where's Jesus? And, and so uh, they all make it to the other side and they find Jesus on the other side and they're, they're, they're asking, how did he get here? How did, and, and here's what the scripture says uh, in verse 25 of John chapter six. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you that you see, you're seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, right? He's saying, which the son of man, he's talking about himself, will give to you for on him, God the father has set his seal. 
And then verse 28 says this, then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he, God, has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you show? What sign are you gonna do that we may see and believe? What work are you gonna perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus says this to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father, watch, he shifts gears, but my father gives you true bread from heaven. It wasn't Moses that gave them that bread, but it's my father that gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. Man, Jesus is messing them up right here. They, uh, these guys, they have heard this story their entire life of, um, you know, every, every good Jew would begin to explain to his children and practice and rehearse in his children's ears uh, the history, their heritage. Why do we believe in Jehovah? What's the big thing about being a Jew? What's the big thing about being the people of God? What makes us different? And they would tell and rehearse the stories um, of what God Jehovah did uh, for the people uh, of the Jewish nation, right? Uh, and so every Jew, every Jew, and even many of the, uh, uh, the heathens around them had heard the stories about what God had done uh, while they were wandering for 40 years in the desert. Every morning, they would wake up to manna. Every morning, they would wake up to bread that God sent from heaven, right? And now, all of a sudden, Jesus is messing up their theology. Verse 44, he says, no one can come to me. What well, they're saying, what, what are we, you know, what, what are the works we must do to be doing the works of God? He said, believe on the one that God sent. Here I am right? And they're saying, well, what signs are you going to do? Because, you know, our fathers ate the manna in, from, that, that came down from heaven. And, they, and he says this, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. The ones that believe on him that God sent from heaven. Then verse 48 says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate that manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. And if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And they are like, what? How are you going to do that, right? They are flipping out because he's so messing up their theology, talking about giving his flesh and, and comparing himself to the bread that came down from heaven. And, and uh, Jesus says, just, just think about it. He, he appeals to them logically. Uh, yes, uh, bread came down from heaven, but it wasn't Moses that gave them that bread in the wilderness. It was the father that gave them that bread in the wilderness. But that was natural bread that they ate and got to live another day. Uh, but that represented a supernatural bread uh, that God was gonna send down from heaven uh, that if you partook uh, of this bread, uh, that you would live uh, and have eternal life forever, that the soul of man would never die. Wow. All of a sudden, the gears have shifted from the triumphal entry 
And the blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Messiah. This is Emmanuel, God with us. Man, uh, here's the king uh, that's, uh, that's uh, coming in on the red carpet. And Jesus stands up and says, tap the brakes, boys. And he takes the bread. And he says, I'm the bread of life. This is what's about to happen. This represents my body. I'm not going to the throne in Jerusalem. This is my body. And this is about what is about to happen. My body is going to be broken. Or he was wounded Come on. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity, right? That's, he's showing them what's about to happen. The ESV says, but he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquity and upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace with God and with his wounds, we are healed. And, and he's saying, uh, uh, listen, uh, you, you're looking at me now, but this bread represents what's about to happen to my body and I'm going to be beaten and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to re re receive the lashes. Uh, I'm going to receive the punishment uh, for the sins uh, that every human being uh, has ever committed uh, and ever will commit. Uh, I'm about to receive uh, the beating and the lashing uh, and my flesh is gonna be broken open for you. Wow. So they were used to hearing about the bread, the story about manna, and Jesus says, I am that bread and then see they're used to hearing stories about Passover because they're good Jewish boys they, they know the history they, they understand uh, Passover they, they practice it every comes you know uh, to them it's kind of like Christmas it's, it happens uh, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to compare the two I'm just trying to explain uh, in our, our culture uh, we know uh, that Christmas comes December 25th every year and that's when we celebrate the birth of our Savior and, and so uh, uh, to them Passover uh, was was this celebration uh, that they celebrated uh, every single year. They celebrated their freedom uh, and they were used to hearing the stories. And Jesus literally has the gall to say, hey, I am that lamb. I am the Passover lamb that will shed my blood for your freedom. And he picks up the cup of wine, the juice, and he begins describing what the juice represented, what the wine represented. He used language uh, that they would understand. Uh, and he said, uh, don't you remember uh, when uh, uh, the, the people of Israel were in bondage for 400 years and, and uh, then there were, uh, Moses came, the deliverer came uh, and uh, there were all of these plagues and Pharaoh wouldn't let his people go. Uh, and finally on the 10th plague, a death angel was coming uh, to take all of the firstborn, even of the animals. Uh, and, uh, and he said, remember, uh, remember that you were in bondage. Uh, and uh, and uh, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 12, he said, the blood shall be a sign for you uh, on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you uh, or destroy you when I strike 
the land uh, of Egypt. See, they had a practice um, uh, that uh, they would bring every year, they would bring a lamb. Every year they would slay a lamb uh, and uh, the, the, they, the lamb had to bleed and die. Listen, they were used to every year of their life, uh, they were used to bringing a, a lamb, a spotless lamb, a young lamb that uh, they had pulled out of the herd, uh, they had brought into their house uh, and kind of domesticated this, uh, this little lamb uh, and they, they would say, uh, uh, they would say, that's the one, that one right there, that's the spotless lamb, that's the pure one, that's the one we need to take and sacrifice. Uh, and they would take that lamb, uh, every year they would go in uh, and they would take it to the priest and they would have to watch as that lamb was slain and its blood was spilled out for their sins. The lamb hadn't done anything wrong. But the, the scripture says this, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. You know, we, we often in our culture today, we kind of like to do things clean and neat. We don't, we don't like to get our hands dirty today in today's culture, right? Y'all, y'all hearing what I'm talking about? So we like to think, uh, well, you know what? We just come down to the altar uh, and, uh, and we just say, oh Lord, uh, I'm a sinner. Would you forgive my sins? And, and he goes, yeah, here, let me sweep them out of the way. It's all good. All good. Bless your heart. What? Y'all, without the shedding of blood, there is no sacrifice. There is no forgiveness of sins. And Jesus picks up the cup and he said, this represents my blood. This represents my body. If you cast your faith on the fact that I have taken your punishment, I took the punishment that you deserved, my body will be broken for you. As you take this, uh, this bread, it represents that you are believing that I paid or I took your punishment. And if you drink this cup, it represents that I paid the full debt and made a new covenant with you. Man, listen, I, in the Old Testament, in Genesis, we find Abraham and in chapter 25 of Genesis, we find Abraham and Sarah, and Sarah passes away. And they grieve Sarah and they bury her in a cave. And the very next chapter, Genesis 26, we find the grieving Abraham. And Abraham is old. And he's sitting down and he calls his oldest servant to him. I'm believing that means the one that he served, uh, that has served him the longest. He calls his servant to him and he says, put your hand here under my thigh. It was, it was a custom thing of making a covenant. Put your hand here under my thigh. I want you to go back to the land of my nativity. I want you to go back to the land of my birth. I want you to go back to the land of my father's, uh, my father Nahor. I want you to go back to that land uh, and I want you to bring me a, a bride for my son. And the, the servant is like, but uh, perhaps, uh, but perhaps she won't come. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he's given all these scenarios and, and Abraham, Abraham says, uh, listen, uh, he, he said, should I go and come back and get Isaac and take him over there? Or, or you know, he's giving all of these options. You know, maybe I should uh, find, uh, uh, you know, one of the local girls. That would be easier. You know what I'm talking about? And, and uh, Abraham says, um, of no, in no 
uncertain terms. Uh, are you to bring a bride? Uh, is he to have a bride? He didn't know. Abraham didn't know that he would even last until, until the wedding. Uh, and he said, uh, no, no uncertain terms. Uh, he is not to marry uh, one of the local girls. Uh, only one of my house. They weren't from Arkansas. But he sent him back and, and he said in no uncertain terms, uh, never, never, never uh, take uh, my son uh, to that land, but go and get a bride uh, and bring the bride to me. So uh, uh, here's, here's what happened. They loaded up 10 camels. They laid these 10 camels down. Man, camels can carry some stuff now, y'all. And they, they laid these 10 camels down uh, with all kinds of uh, presents and gold and jewelry and presents. And, and uh, they headed out on the journey. Uh, and he gets, over, uh, uh, he gets over to the land of Abraham's nativity. Uh, and, uh, and there's a wellspring there. And he comes up to the wellspring uh, and he, he, he begins to pray. He, say, he begins to say, God, uh, uh, please make my journey successful. God, uh, uh, you know, uh, make, make it successful for, uh, uh, for my master Abraham. Uh, he said, let the woman uh, that, uh, that I asked for a drink of water, uh, let her say to me, uh, I'll, uh, yes, I'll give you a drink of water and I will also, uh, uh, you know, give a drink of water to all of your camels. Uh, and so he, he not only, only, uh, I mean, he just barely gets through praying uh, and he opens his eyes and he looks up uh, and uh, here comes Rebecca. And he says to her, Rebecca, or he doesn't know who she is. He says, would you please give me a drink of water? It was time for the, uh, for the young damsels to come to the, the spring and get water and take it back to their house. And so she had already gotten water and had it on her shoulder and she, she makes haste and takes it and pours and gives them a drink. And she says, uh, hang on, uh, I'll also give water to all of your camels uh, until they have had their full. Now, let me tell you something. One camel can drink a lot of water, but 10 camels, man, she's going back and forth. And the servant of Abraham is stunned as he's watching and he's seeing the fulfillment of, 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 of his prayer. He's seeing the fulfillment of his, his request from God. And he asks her, you know, he, he says, whose daughter are you? And he says, uh, uh, she says, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a descendant of uh, Nahor and, and of Bethuel. Bethuel was Abraham's brother. And so uh, uh, he is so excited that he he gives a nose ring. Why a nose ring? I don't know. A nose ring and a bracelet. He gives it to her and says, do you have uh, any room uh, at your father's house uh, for some guests? Uh, and man, she's so excited. Uh, she jumps up and runs off and leaves Abraham. She's like, yeah, boom, she's gone. And all of a sudden, she goes back and, and tells her father and brothers everything that's just taken place. And so Laban, her brother, comes back uh, to the well and invites um, Abraham and the, uh, the camel drivers back to the house. And uh, man, they've, they've given, they've given uh, straw to the, the camels and they fix, fix this big, prepared this big banquet, this big meal. And all of a sudden, they say, it's time to eat. But the servant of Abraham refused to sit down. He said, hang on just a minute. Let me read this to you. Genesis chapter 24, verse 33 says, then the food was served, but Abraham's servant says, I don't want to eat until I've told you why I have come. All right, Laban said, tell us. And so the servant of Abraham began to say, Abraham, God has made him a mighty man. He's the most wealthy man in all the land. Uh, and uh, God has done great things for him. Uh, and Sarah, his wife, has died. Uh, and Abraham has given everything that he owns to his son. And he has sent me on a journey to find a bride for his son. 
And he stands there and he tells them all of these things. And he says, so tell me, what is the answer? I don't wanna move on, I have a job to do. There's an urgency here in the servant's voice. There's an urgency, I'm not gonna eat, I'm not gonna sit down, uh, until I'm not gonna quit, uh, until I have an answer. Uh, will uh, you uh, marry uh, my master's son? See, listen, there's a tradition in Jewish culture and the tradition is when a young man and a father sees a young maiden and he says, well, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and he wants to marry her. They draw up a contract. And in that contract is enumerated all of the things that that young man and that father and his family are going to bequeath and going to bestow and going to offer uh, that bride. And uh, they'll draw up the contract uh, and they'll offer it uh, to the young lady. Uh, and then uh, they'll pour a glass of wine uh, and uh, the young lady has a choice if she receives the glass of wine and takes a drink uh, she's saying yes uh, I will marry him uh, if she refuses the wine uh, she's saying no uh, I don't want to marry him uh, so I want you to just understand uh, it probably caught uh, the disciples a little off guard that day uh, when all of a sudden uh, Jesus was kind of doing some things that looked like a wedding proposal and he offered them a drink. Listen, I want you to understand that the wedding covenant, if the bride accepted the, a drink of the wine, it was a binding contract from that moment forward. It was a binding contract. Uh, the only way out uh, of that binding contract uh, was if the groom uh, broke the contract um, or uh, there was death. There was, there was no other way. There was no escape uh, from the contract. Uh, if they took uh, and received the wine, it was a binding contract from that day forward. Uh, and uh, and uh, if she took the wine and drank it, uh, then the young man uh, would say, Hey, I'm so excited. I'll be back soon. Be watching. I'm coming for you, but I've got to go back to my father's house and I'm going to build on a room to my father's house and then I'm going to come get you and I'm going to bring you in to myself to where we can be together for always. But on the other hand, we find over in Corinthians where Paul is writing and Paul says, communion is serious business. Paul says, there are many who are sick and even have died because they received communion unworthily. They acted as though it was unimportant. Once we receive the cup, we're saying, yes, I'll marry you. And it's an unbreakable contract that we are committing. And Jesus offers the cup to the disciples. And the servant stands before Bethuel and Laban and, and all of the family members with Rebecca, and he says, give me an answer, tell me. Uh, see, the Holy Spirit uh, has come to the earth, uh, and he's come to the earth to seek out a bride uh, for the son uh, of the master, uh, for the inherit, for the heir uh, of all things. Uh, and he's got this contract, uh, and he says, I'm gonna give you all of these things. Uh, I'm gonna bestow all of these things upon you, uh, but I want an answer, I can't stop. I'm, I'm, I'm on a mission. I, I need an answer. Will you marry the heir? That's the question 
today. When we see the juice and the bread, this represents he took my punishment. That bread they ate and passed away. But this bread gives me eternal life. This seals my fate. This says that I believe I was a sinner and I owed a debt. And a spotless lamb came and spilt his blood and paid for my sins and made a new covenant of eternal life with me. This morning, would you just take a moment all across this building, would you just bow your heads and this morning, are you in a right relationship with the Father today? The Holy Spirit is standing. He's not seated. He's not at rest. He's at work looking for the bride. Inviting the bride looking for one that'll say yes to the invitation to a wedding. Today, if you're in the house and you don't know Jesus, today as we celebrate the one who came in the name of the Lord, the one who came to pay the price of our sin that we couldn't pay for ourselves. Today, as we celebrate that, today we're reminded that our sins weren't just swept underneath the rug, but Jesus actually paid the cost. Today, we're about to receive communion in just a moment together. So just, just rest and I'll give you instructions and we'll walk through this together. And we'll all receive communion together. But if you're in the house today and you would say, preacher, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe... You'd say, I've never invited him into my heart. I've never surrendered my life to him. Or maybe you'd be one of those that said, you know, years ago, I walked with him for a while, but then I got discouraged. I got frustrated and I gave up and I walked away. He didn't walk away from me, but I gave up and walked away. If that's you today, and either one of those, with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, we'll make sure everyone has communion in just a moment. But if you're in the house and you would say, I need that relationship with Jesus. I need that forgiveness of sins. I need a new leaf on life. I need to make him Lord of my life. I want that eternal life. I don't have that assurance of heaven today. Just right where you are. Would you be man or woman enough just to slip your hand up and write back down and say, I want that salvation today. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there another this morning? You would say, if he did all of that, thank you, sir. God bless you, man. If he did all of that for me. Yes, thank you. Thank you, man. God bless you. It takes a real man or a woman, to be honest, to slip their hand up and say, man, 
I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Listen, right where you are, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Would you be man or woman enough just to stand to your feet right where you are, just right where you are. Just stand up right where you are. And come on, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Just stand up. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. If you slipped your hand up, just, just stand to your feet. Listen, he said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And today, I, I just wanna pray a prayer with you. Thank you guys so much for your honesty and your humility today, your hunger for God. Is there another? Come on, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Thank you, ma'am, God bless you. Don't let this opportunity. Listen, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God came for you to have this encounter today, for your life to be transformed today. Right now, all over the house, we're gonna pray a prayer together. Listen, he said, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Man, I'm so excited for you today. Let's pray this prayer together. Everybody in the house, Heavenly Father, we come in Jesus' name. We believe that Jesus is your plan. We believe that we are sinners, but Jesus paid our debt. And because of his sacrifice, we can be forgiven. And because of what he did, our names are written in heaven today. And we've been adopted by you and today we say yes today we say yes we will we'll be the bride we accept your proposal to live eternally with Jesus we thank you for this today in Jesus name amen